Okay, I think we're recording. This is your camera right here. We have the camera. This is the body. This is one of the lenses. We're going to have another lens. Uh, you're going to have a flash. This is like an extra flash that comes that we purchased, actually. Uh, what does this do? That's the flash stand. Oh, if you want to put it someplace else. Because mm -hmm. you don't have to have it attached to the camera. I never used that. But I should have. These are called hoods. They go on your lens. Like if it's a really sunny day, you'll put that on top of your lens so that it kind of um, diminishes the harsh sun on the pictures, wouldn't you say? That's kind of the mm -hmm. purpose. You have some extra lenses here. These are polarizing lenses. So if you're on the beach or if you're in the snow, they're going to help bring out the colors um, if you put these on. This just kind of goes on that when you have the lens off, you have these two um, covers to protect. And actually, I'd like to point out that one thing is missing on here, and that's the covers for the front. There, uh, we have one, but we someplace. Ah, oh, here it is. I have one cover for the lens, so I always keep that on the camera one. But the other one was lost, so I just keep a, a piece of fabric in there, and I when I put it away. I protect it like that and kind of place it down into the bag. So that might be a purchase that you would make is one of these covers. You can do that at uh, Lens Crafter or um, National Camera Exchange. This is going to, you're going to plug this into your camera to upload it onto your computer. I think that's the whole pack. Now, when you um, have the camera here, there is a button over on the side that you'll press in and you can turn the lens to remove it. You're going to see a red dot and a red dot on the lens. You put those two red dots together and then twist it to secure it. Um, i trying to think where to go now. The top, you're going to have a lot of choices here. To start out with, I would really suggest just being in auto, uh, and that's going to take the picture for you. But if you want to start playing around with it, you'll go to manual, and then that's when you'll have all the options on the back, which I'll get into in a minute. I think I want to talk about the um, batteries down here and the uh, cards. cards. Yeah. So you click this to the side and it'll open up. The battery comes out like that and you can put it into the charger, which I also have to get out for you. Well, I guess that's just the battery down there. And then over on the side is where you have the media cards. I have two media cards in here. One is very small and one is larger. Um, there is a way on the back you're going to see a place down here when you hit, oh, this is going to be hard. There you go. All the way down to the bottom, you can choose between D or CF, and those are just the two cards is what that's saying. So if you fill one of the cards up in a setting, you can just switch it by going to the menu and going all the way down. The menu can be changed by hitting menu, and it'll change the look of the menu. I like it with all the information on it here, or information also changes it. It'll have like big numbers like that or little or nothing at all. When I am taking pictures, I'm typically taking it through the viewfinder, but you can hit uh, the button over here and I'll change it so that you're taking a picture using the, like, like you would other digital cameras. If you want to see your pictures, you're going to hit play. And as it says, there's no video or no pictures on here. So nothing's showing up. Um, instead of moving something on here to zoom in, you're actually going to move your camera lens and you do that by turning it. So you can get in on something and on auto, auto 
it'll then just self-focus. Um, this, the longer lens, the one that's on the camera right now, is going to get further away. You'll be able to get closer up on things, objects that are farther away. And then this one is like you're taking a picture of someone uh, closer to you. So the smaller one is for uh, closer things. Okay, talk about the flash. The flash is a couple okay. things. One, it's bouncing light differently. Um, you can use the flash that's on the camera, but it's going to be shooting straight at it and you're going to get a lot more shadows. So why we purchased the flash was for some indoor shots um, and it's got a shoe on it that slips right into the camera. So with the flash in the camera, we now have it set up where we can shoot, oop, that's just a hood, where we can shoot and bounce it off the ceiling so that we're okay. Okay? If I push a little button in the back, I can change the angle that it's bouncing at. Oh, it's on the sides. On the sides, sorry. I can change the angle it's bouncing at. The button in that back makes it so I can bounce off of a side wall or whatever you want to do there. There is a second set of batteries for the flash. And they're just double A's. And they're just double A's on the side there. Okay. There's all your different settings on the back to take care of the flash. To tell you the truth, I can't remember all of them, and we are out of batteries on it right now, so I can't even go into those. But that's a basic, it's a larger flash, it's going to throw the light further, it's going to, and it allows you to be directional with your and light. And softer with this thing on, it's a softer light. It'll be good when you have baby because the baby just kind of holds still and you can, you can uh, really think about setting that up. That's more for like, if you have a subject that's just going to be sitting there, it's really hard when you have a lot of people around. This is a uh, remote control. How did we do that? So the remote control, if I go into, on the back, if I change to, If I go down and change the shooting mode right here, right now it's in single shooting mode, which means it's going to take one picture per button press. I need to change my shooting mode to look like a little remote. So right there is my shooting mode, and I think this one says remote. No, oh, that's, down, down on that's, the second level. 10 seconds, there's remote. Remote zero seconds, remote two seconds it is. So now we have a little small remote that activates the camera. It shoots at an IR or shoots at a little spot right here. So you can set your camera up, you can get your family shot where you're all sitting together. And usually with the remote, you're going to want to do um, two seconds so that you have a chance to. Or 10, even. So you have a chance to fire the remote. I'm pushing the remote right now. And you can see it's counting down. And it should be taking the shot here. So it does take that shot, though. And it'll fire. Is the, you'll see this blinking. I don't think it's working right now. Oh, there, there it is. Goes. Yep. So uh, that, too, has a little battery. So you just pull the bottom out and it's like a little like hearing aid battery, one of those flat little ones. Okay. You only have probably four more minutes. Then the other thing that we have to talk about quickly is how the light gets into the camera. Because you, you need to understand that part to be able to understand how to control what the pictures look like. Um, the first thing that a lot of people want to control is the depth of field, it's called. And the depth of field is how much of your your distance is in focus. So it'll be the first 
five feet are out of focus, the next five feet are in focus, and everything behind that are out of focus. Controlling the depth of field is called the aperture. Okay? And what the aperture is, is let's say this is the image sensor, or what used to be the film, is there is a circle in front of that. The smaller the number, the larger the circle opens up. When the circle opens up larger, it has a smaller depth of field. When the circle closes down smaller, it has a deeper depth of field. So you get down to the point where everything is in focus. So if you want to have a, um, a real narrow depth of field, you want to make that aperture as big as possible. Okay. So, what that controls, though, also is how much light is in the image sensor. And that's something to understand, because the image sensor needs a certain amount of light to hit it to actually take the picture. Otherwise, you're going to have a dark picture, or you're going to have a really white picture, a blown out picture, it's called. So, that correlates directly with what's called the shutter speed. And what the shutter speed is, is the little window that's in front of the piece of image sensor, and it flips up to take the picture and flips back down. The bigger the aperture, it's letting more light in so the shutter speed can be quicker. If you're letting a little tiny bit of light in like this with the aperture, so you have a high f-stop it's called, the, the shutter has to stay open longer. What the shutter staying open is controlling is how much motion you're getting. If you're getting too much motion in your shot, it's a low light situation and it means that shutter is staying open too long. The other thing is you might be moving a little bit as you're taking the shot. That's why it was important how Nicole was showing how to hold the camera, hold it flat on your hand, grip the lens, and you keep your elbows tight when you're doing this so that you get rid of all that motion. So that shutter speed, so to get that shutter speed to flip down or to go faster so you get rid of motion, you need to either add light, like fill light, add a lamp there or something like that, add your flash, that will allow that shutter speed to go very quickly, okay? Or you need to increase your aperture size, All right? So that's the, th so that we talked about aperture how big the hole is. We talked about shutter speed, which is how fast that's flipping up. And the last thing that, that is correlating with that is ISO. ISO means how sensitive the actual image sensor is. A lower number means it's less sensitive. So an ISO of 100 versus the ISO of 400, the 100 is going to need more light to take the picture. 400 it's going to need less light to take the picture. So if you have a low light situation, you're going to probably turn your ISO up. And it says ISO right on the back. You can go into your settings. When I'm on full manual, your ISO is right there. ISO 200 right now. I can click on that and I can bump that up if I'm in a low light situation. So that's what ISO, controlling the image sensor, aperture, controlling how big the opening is coming, bringing in the light, and shutter speed, controlling how quickly it is exposing to the light. And that's when you're in manual. Uh, you don't need to know any of that to begin with, with the auto, but if you want to go to manual, then you'll make all those changes and have to learn that knowledge. All right, good luck. Give us a call if you need help.